So this is a disturbing email that I'm going to read. But unfortunately, people don't think that one dog or two dogs or three dogs can kill another dog. But unfortunately, it happens too often. And in this case, this family had two pit bulls and a boxer and then a small dog. And they were gone one day. And they came home to find that the two pit bulls had killed the boxer. I'll read it to you, and then we can talk about it a little bit. I live with my husband and four dogs. I have two American pit bull terriers, one male that's two and a half years old, one female that's five and a half years old, which is his mother, and one Jack Russell terrier, four years old, and one boxer male, nine years old. My husband came home Friday evening to the boxer having been attacked by the pit bulls, or at least one of them for sure. Needless to say, they, or one of them, had obviously gotten into a fight with the boxer, and it ended with the boxer's throat being ripped out and left to bleed to death on the floor in the kitchen. Now, I do want to stress that I feel that, in my opinion, Neither pit, to me, was ever dog aggressive, even before this incident. They have had their own tussles, like siblings would. It drives me crazy when people try and put human emotions into dogs. These dogs are not siblings. So, they, so she said, they have had their own tussles, like siblings would, over a toy or a bone. But never to the point where I felt that anyone get, would get hurt, much less be killed. The female pit has never shown aggression to the boxer, and only has it to the male pit when he has provoked a fight with her. The male pit only backs down from the 13-pound Jack Russell Terrier. In my opinion, the Jack Russell's living on borrowed time. Or, unless we correct him and have seen that, he may have started a tussle. Since the boxer is now gone, we are struggling with what to do with the male pit, and possibly the female pit. The female pit was mine before we got married. And the boxer was his dog before the marriage. The male pit was kept after the female second litter. Both of the pits had blood on them when my husband came from, and at least one or more scratch marks on them that were caused by the boxer before it died. The female only had one scratch on her chest, which leads me to believe, in my own opinion, that she may have been trying to save the boxer and fight off the male pit. Yeah, right. Of course, we will never know what truly happened. We are struggling with what to do with both of them. They have always been inside dogs, and we have left them outside only over the weekend when we were gone. It has been hard to even deal with the situation as we both love the boxer very much. And we love our pits and Jack Russell. We're struggling with what to do with the pits. Can they be trained not to be aggressive with other dogs? Do you recommend putting them to sleep or finding them homes where they're the only dog in the household? I can't have that happen again. I'm torn because I loved them all and want to do what's best for them. Please let me know what your opinion is. I don't mind if you're blunt. Well, I'm going to preface this by saying that the majority of the emails in this dominant and aggressive dog course were collected by me back in 2005. So these dogs are long gone. And I didn't keep the answer that I read to this woman back then. 
The reason I collected these emails back then, remember when that was in terms of the internet back in 2005, and I ended up having a stack of emails concerning dog fights and dog aggression, and I was gonna use them in writing a book. Never really got around to it, and that was before streaming video, it was before uh, online courses, it was in the infancy really of training dogs on the internet. In this case, this is a tragedy what happened, but it 100% happened because of the way that these people chose to live with these dogs. I can't tell you whether they put the dogs to sleep. I didn't have follow-up uh, emails on them. I don't really like to say that they should have put the dogs to sleep. On the other hand, do you take these dogs and rehome them when they have a bite history like this? That's like giving a hand grenade to another family and hoping to hope that nothing happens with this other family. To allow these dogs to have a tussle, what's a tussle? A tussle is a dog fight. It's just something that somebody may not want to call a serious dog fight, but it's a dog fight. And to give these adult dogs toys and bones and then allow them to have a tussle is about as bad as it gets. So the answer to her question is, can you train this away out of these dogs? No, you cannot. Can you manage these dogs? If they were prepared to get metal dog crates, not plastic airline crates, but metal dog crates, where these dogs, when they're in the house, are in a dog crate and only one is out at a time, and quite frankly, if I had these pits, they would have a, they would have a muzzle on every time they came out of their dog crate. I wouldn't fool with it. But I'm not even going to go down that road because I think that's a dangerous road to go down. So truthfully, when I talk about when's the time to throw in the towel, and in the description for that segment, I say, I'm not going to tell people when to throw in the towel. This is a case when it's time to throw in the towel. I'm sorry. It's just too too dangerous. And do not kid yourself. This female did not jump into this fight to try and protect that boxer. I've never seen a dog fight, and I've seen some bad dog fights in my life. I've never seen a dog fight where there's two dogs fighting and another dog jumps in trying to protect one of the dogs in the fight. I've seen dog fights where two dogs are fighting and one or two other dogs jump in to jump on the one that's losing. That's what I've seen. And more than likely, that's what happened here. Both of these pit bulls killed this dog. Almost guarantee it. Without being there, I almost guarantee it. So like I said, this was a tragedy back in 2005. It's a tragedy today. I can't imagine what their kitchen looked like when they came home. And you have to feel sorry for that dog, that boxer, and how it died in its own home, in its own kitchen. So in closing here, I need to talk about the fact of where these questions and answers come from. They come from the Ask Cindy portal on the front of Learberg.com. Cindy's my wife. And if you, you don't need to be a customer of Learberg to ask a question. If you have a question on training, if you have a question on raising puppies, on health care, on breeding, feel free to log in. And, uh, you do need to put your email address because the email is tied to the question that you, eh, that you have. And if Cindy comes back or if you come back a week or a month or a year later, she can call up all of the questions and answers that you've written in on and review them. And it's just a better way for her to help. We don't sell mailing lists. We don't spam people with our mailing list. 
We do have weekly, two weekly newsletters that go out, but people can opt into those newsletters. If they want to opt out, they're off the list and they don't get a newsletter. They also don't get, they don't learn about when we have good sales on our online courses either, or on the equipment that we sell. So, if you have a question, ask Cindy, she answers them usually the day after people write them in, unless she's not feeling good or unless she's traveling. 